Hi everyone, welcome back. Okay, this time we're going to make a ring using a little layer marred stone. So I've already captured the stone using Midway Station. I used uh, a 22 inch piece of 18 gauge round soft wire and I set the layer mar in the middle. Okay, and I wrapped it up here using about six inches of 22 gauge half round wire just like we always do. In this ring I'm going to show you how to use or how to create four bands on the shank of this ring and how to do that on the mandrel with my with my little trick. Okay so I'm going to take um, I'm going to take my mandrel and remember they're tapered they go from size one my mandrel goes all the way up to size 15 and I'm going to shoot for a ring size 6, right about here. So, you know, but I'm going to start my ring way up here. And I'll show you why. We're going to make a spring shank using each of these wires. And we're going to make four bands for the shank. So what happens when you make a spring is that once you let go of the coil, the wires want to expand. So rather than fighting this entire, you know, the slide of this entire mandrel, I like to just go up here to the top. I'm going to hold my ring uh, or my gemstone cup with my thumb and I'm going to take this wire, um, lay them down. I'm going to take this half round and I'm going to come around the top of this mandrel and underneath the stone and over the half round. Okay, This half round is going in a certain direction. I've left it with the flat side facing up. I'm going to come around my mandrel again. And just lay it down like that. Okay, Then take the ring, flip it over and reposition it on the mandrel. Get your half rounds so that this one is pointed down and the flat side's looking at you because that's the way we have them in the back. And this one is laying this way with the flat side facing you. And now we'll take and do the same with this opposite wire here. Okay, so I'll take the this one that hasn't been rounded yet and I'll pass around the mandrel, underneath the ring cup, and around the mandrel again. Okay. Just like that. So this is what you have from that. You have four bands for your shank in the back. And I'll show you how to hammer this out so that they come together. And when you look at it from the front, it kind of looks like you got five. One, two, three, four, and five, if you count these two outside open ones. Okay, so pretty much this one, this ring right now is about a size two. Um, that isn't going to fit much. So I'm just going to scooch it down now. It's, it's one big coil, and so you can just use your fingers and gently scooch it down. These two are going to want to draw up um, as you grow this ring, so just let them. And try not to break your half round. And just scooch it down here until it becomes a five and a half. Here's my six marker, so I want to land the ring right about here, crawl the ring down to here. You see how these two wires just, you know, let the ring have length as you grew the shank. But this way, the, the ring is gripping the mandrel um, while you're growing its size. If you try to coil it around right here, when it springs open, it's going to want to be this big. Okay, so if you start way up here, then you can grow the size and you have tension now in the spring to help you hold the ring right here. Okay, hope that makes sense. Okay, now you can lay these um, these all back down, get them all neatened up again. Put your half rounds back down, 
bring this coil back around to either side. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And it's about at a five and a half because when I hammer it, it's going to grow to about a six. Okay. So you can go ahead and take it off the mandrel now. Get your wires all, the four wires in the middle kind of back together. And you'll see too, even though we're going to band these, there's still room for it to grow. So once we get it back on the mandrel, um, we'll shape it again. But for right now, we're going to catch these wires. So the half rounds are going already in a certain direction. And hopefully the flat side's, you know, looking up towards the stone. You've got one on each side. So I'm going to start with this one on the right. Hopefully you can see it okay. And I just want to catch, catch these bands. So I'm going to come over through the shank and come over both of these. You want the tension tight enough. It's a little bit tricky while it's underneath the cup here. You want the tension tight enough that you've got no bubbles in here, but you don't want them so tight that you can't pass through them. You want about a millimeter. So after I tighten it up, I just stick my fingernail back in it and loosen it back up again evenly. Okay. Then come over both of those. Come down through the third one. Use your plier to help you with this wire. And again, kind of pull them together and just do a nice wrap on them. But make sure you don't squish these wires together. Just leave the slightest gap. It's not hugely important, okay? Because we're going to hammer it all together. And then just give a little tap if needed. Don't crush the wire, just slightly tap it. And now come up between wires, the first two. Okay. Kind of weaving with this half round. That's why you need that gap so you can come back through. Okay. See underneath. Now I'm going to catch the next two. And I'm going to come up in the middle of these, in the middle. You can use your pliers to help you. I should have given you a little more length on this. Just use your fingernails. Pull that half round tight. Come back over. You got to catch this fifth wire up here. Okay. Just tap up, you know, tap it a little bit if there's a bubble. Okay. And you're going to come up between these two here next. So make sure there's the slight gap. Yeah, give yourself more like eight inches of wire so you're not working too short here with this half round. I'm wishing I had started with eight inches now. Okay, and that's it. I'm going to make it with one loop. Just tap these so you've got just a nice little weave up the side of your ring, uh, up the side of the cup, through all of these shank wires. And then I'm going to do one final single wrap around this end one. And I'm going to leave the cut looking up. Okay, so not, not underneath. And it's okay because we're going to uh, use that wire for design anyway and that spot won't be seen. So just like that. Keep the cut on top. Okay, don't see that at all. And now go weave this side. Do the same thing. See where your half round's coming from.
Just make it straight. Catch these first two wires with one loop. Pull tight and stick your finger in there and let it expand again. Then come up and dive between into the third one, between the third and fourth one up here. It's short and you can't make the turn. We're going to come back up. So you have to go all the way through like you're catching all three of them. Oh, that's not my, my tapper. Plier, that's my cutter. Okay, get a nice band on them and then come up between these two so that you can grab the next two. Keep the flat side of the half round on the frame, on the frame uh, shank wires. Come up in the middle. So we're grabbing these next two. I've pulled it tight. So I'm going to stick my finger in there and loosen it back up. Tap it lightly and I'll catch these last two. Come up in between here. So we're just kind of making like a two on two weave, two over two weave with this half round. And just like that, you can push them all close to the, to the stone in a minute. Do a 360 around this guy. Once or twice and land that cut up here. Okay. So then just get all these close. You could have taken that half round and done some, you know, decorative wiring there. Okay, so pretty much our ring is caught. It's a scratchless shank. It's a nice four, four sturdy bands. Looks good. So let's put this back on our mandrel. Take it back down to the size. Hold on to your stone and turn it. You know, just kind of whittle it down carefully. Okay, so it should give you tension at about five and a half right here. And that's about where we're going to hammer the ring once we do design on it. Okay, so you can leave it on the mandrel. Um, this just helps to kind of reshape things. Or you can work off the mandrel right now, whichever is easier for you. I'm going to work on the mandrel so that my newbies can maybe have an easier time. So I've just reshaped the shank. I've just pushed my weaves, you know, tight into the stone. And now I have these two wires for design. So I can do anything I want. I can come around and make swirls. I can go this way, you know, with either of them. Um, so I think I'm going to do that. Last time we went this way, you know, and followed the curve of the wire. And that would also, by the way, lock the shank. So if I turned it this way, um, the shank is locked by the weaves, but, you know, if you needed it more so, we could turn it out this way with design and just lock it in as well. So this time I'm going to go this way, and I'm just going to do a nice wide turn, like I'm making a spiral around here. Okay, and then I'll chase it with this one. Just make sure your weaves are turned in nice and that they're fairly even to both sides there. Just give yourself a nice, use the, use the mandrel, give yourself a nice spiral to the other side. And I'm going to show you, I'm, these, I'm curving these wires as I turn them. You know, I'm using the edge of the mandrel here. And I'm coming down so that I meet this other one. You can make that turn as big or as little as you want. Same thing here. Just going to turn down until I get to the edge of this guy. Okay, so I've got a nice spiral going on. Make sure that you look at the profile and that your cup, you know, is sitting nice. Don't worry about it right now. 
it'll all straighten out. But as you turn these wires, you just want to make sure you're always checking your stone, checking everything to make sure things don't shift too much. Okay, so now I can take this above the other edge. And above the other edge. And I can lock it down, you know, right in there, or I can spin around again and see, you know, see if I like that. If I want to spin around again, this is kind of like an eye shape. So rather than just turn it, I want to get my plier right here and give it the slightest corner to help it turn in a clean way. So right here where the edge of the cup comes down, you know, I've got my wire slanted where, you know, curved where I want it. Now I'm just going to take this and make the slightest, the slightest hard point right there. It's a soft point actually. All I did was I took that and just gave it a little turnout. Okay, so now when I do my, my curve, that little point will snuggle up nice. Okay, turning down into the side of this ring and bringing these wires together again. And I'll just lay on top of this side, see? So now you have a nice little base to, you know, do some design with. So the main part of this is to give you four shanks back here and to give you another little swirly design. Okay. I could go around more if you want to do more. I think for me, I'm going to just end a couple of turns here and then we'll add some beads to this and then we'll hammer out. Okay. So you can go ahead and... Uh, Take that off the mandrel. So these right here, I'm just going to hold them now that I have them where I want them. I'm going to turn this one up slightly. Probably want to drop a little curl right there. So I'll just give myself some space. And then again, I want to come to this side, so I'm not just going to turn this. You could, but you could also just give it a little, you know, tip right here um, so that it makes that corner so just slightly like that just the slightest tip so that when I turn this it's a little, a little helps a little bit sometimes sometimes not and then uh, you know I'll make another pretty turn you know, up with that one, I think. Yeah, I think that's pretty. So we'll cut this one. Nice, clean cut. Get a round nose on it. Just turn a cute You turn into that space. Okay, this should lay nice. And then I can leave this one way over here. I could, you know, make the turn go the other way, but I'll just echo it. So I'll give a cut out here. Look at the tip of this. I've got my thumb right there just helping me hold that curve. I'm going to get a nice tight turn going down. Always looking at this one too and make them pretty. So that they can live next to each other and look pretty. I'll just turn a little curl into this spot right here. It's thick wire so sometimes I like to tighten it up with some flat nose. That's cute. I munched the tip there, so I'm, that's my usual. So I'm going to snip it out. I always plan to sacrifice the tips. Um, 
because I need it. I need to grip real hard. Okay, so that's really pretty. You can add beads. We'll do that in a minute. Tie some coils, whatever you want to do. Okay, very pretty. So now let's grow this a little bit and hammer the shank. You can put it back on here. Sometimes I tie the elements down and then I hammer it. Sometimes I hammer it because these are open elements, so they're going to adjust. Um, so I feel like I'm going to adjust them anyway, so I don't tie them down just yet. Anyway, it's up to you. So I'm going to settle my ring, find my size, so I'm at five and a half. I'm always going to safeguard, you know, the ring head. And back here, I'm going to start... Um, in the middle of this wire. I always like to make sure that my sides are settled, okay, that they're nice and, you know, where I want them. Put your finger on the ring. You can give a little bit of a tap. I always do this just to kind of feel my hammer, you know, not really doing anything more than tapping these edges, making sure things are nice. Okay, so we'll start the hammer from the center back of the ring. I'm going to hammer it this way towards each edge, okay? And then after that, I'm going to be doing um, more of a sliding action because I'm, I'm going to hammer like down the shank and I'm going to hit these bands down, okay? So first we'll just hammer... You'll feel the ring grow. Just settle it. Check everything. There's no urgency here, so you just hammer carefully. Always safeguarding uh, the tip of your, the top of your stone. So once you get a hammer all the way across this shank um, and you feel like you know you hammered it fairly even across here, hammer down so it's more like a, you're sliding, it's hard to show you under the camera, but it's more like you're sliding down the shank and hitting these bands downward, okay? After you've done that a few times, take the ring, check check the design elements, make sure they didn't shift too much, like this one is shifting. That's okay, I've still got room for it to shift. Just reposition, spin your mandrel, and flip your ring over. The mandrel's tapered, so you gotta hammer the ring on, you know, on both, both flip, both sides. So I'll come down, see it's grown to six. I'm making sure my design still looks the way I want it to, and it does. It's still living, everything is still living where I want it to. And now I'm going to hammer it again. And I'm right over size 6. So I'm just going to strike the edge of these bands together, coming down. So that's pretty good. So I'm actually more like at six and a quarter, but that's okay. If you take the tension off of it, it settles right about six. All right. So now that's how you hammer your multi-band shank here. It's beautiful. It's wide and it's sturdy. And you've got a nice ring head. Lots of options for um, embellishment. So I hope you like that. And uh, you can come back and, you know, do some more decoration with me in a minute if you want to. Okay, welcome back. So with this ring now, I've just grabbed some 
one or I think these are two millimeter. I you know I don't know how seed beads are sized, but these are about one two millimeter beads. So cute, uh, copper colored. They don't have to be copper metal. These are beautiful. I think they're glass or some seed beads. But I used 26 gauge wire. I anchored to my ring frame. Here's the leading fragment. And then I just inserted, you know, a line of these beads, tied them down here and grabbed my loop, my, my spiral decoration while I'm at it. I still have my length and I can use it right now to insert maybe a bigger bead ball right here or a big crystal if I want, which is a side of me you don't even know yet. So I have these beautiful six mil well it kind of looks like a mixed bucket but these are supposed to be um i think they're four millimeter maybe six pre-night beads Ooh, i have some other cute little four millimeter jades or something in here all right so i'll find one of these that i like this guy's good and i'll just drop them onto the end of my 26 gauge take it down to the ring and see if I like it oh that's so cute I do so I'll just tie him on right there I need to catch you know this loop here this spiral so might as well do it with this wire because it's handy and it's right here and then I can continue down this spiral and and continue to coil if I want to and I probably will do that That's cute. And I'll just make a few coils until I reach over here. Right here, you might also, while you're, um, because these are open elements, as you pass the shank, um, find discreet ways to maybe grab one time um, if you need to settle these down to the shank at all. If you feel like they lift at all, then use the opportunity while you're here to maybe get one loop around that guy on the inside. So it helps to hold this element against the side of the ring. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'll keep wrapping to my liking here. You could have dropped another couple of beads in there if you felt like you wanted to. I'm always holding my element down with my thumb because I'm pulling up and away with this weaving wire. You don't want to accidentally pull everything out of shape. So when you feel like you're close enough, if you want to, you can jump through both of those. Let's just start making, you know, an attractive double coil along here. And that holds all that together in the elements down too. And here's where I'm talking about, I have a really good opportunity to come down here um, and grab this bottom wire to help hold this element down onto the ring shank if I need to. Okay, I can, I can pass through here. I would do it discreetly so you don't have, you know, a wire doing this. Um, but as you're coiling, coiling past, you can if you need to. could also be adding more beads to this side if you want to. I'm not going to. I'm just going to make some coils. And then I might actually even just not coil all the way around. I might just end it right over here somewhere cute. Just like that. And if I wanted to end it right here, we're certainly not going to leave this wire pointed down towards the finger. There's a nice crevice right there. You cut this and tuck it up in there. Okay. All right, you guys. Well, I hope you enjoy this little ring series. Um, I might do one or two more this week for us. So we have a few ring options. So we've done a, uh, a double shank and now we've done four.
You could weave all of this too, by the way, if you wanted to. We don't have to. There's an easier way to do that, but you could. I'm going to go ahead and start trimming off my, my leading wire here. I'm going to point it up. I'm going to snip it, and I'm just going to tuck it over so that it isn't seen on top of this wire right there. Just like that. I would get a finer plier here, let's see. All I did with that was cut it and then I flipped it up and snuggled it right there between those two. It'll never be seen or felt. It'll never come out. Okay. And now this one over here you're not going to coil all the way over, find a spot somewhere in here. I feel like that's going to slide, so I'm actually going to try to catch it a little better than that. So I'm holding all these coils back. I don't want them to go loose over time, so I it, to trim it right there, it might over time go loose. So I might, uh, it'll be hard to do, but you could try to dive, you know, into there. And I'm going to try to do that from the top and catch that single frame wire through the shank there. You see that? What I just did. Pull it through. Oop, it just broke. There's my bit at the end, and it just broke right there. So I'm going to just turn it up. Lucky for me, there's probably just enough room. You would have made one loop around this one and pointed the end of the wire up. Seems a little tedious, but if you're going to make these beautiful rings, um, you don't want things like these little wires letting go. Ooh, tight, but it's up there. Okay, that makes me feel better. Okay, scratchless, and that should never let go. And so pretty. Hope you enjoyed this one. Please let me know how you feel about these rings, and uh, certainly if you make them, hunt me down on social media and show me your beautiful creation. Thanks again for being here with me. I appreciate every single one of you. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.